Hi, this is Hito from Samurai Taban. In this channel, we'll share scientific knowledge of samurai culture and exciting facts related to traditional Japanese practice. We're aiming to have 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. Please subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comment. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Copper is said to be the first metal used by humans. Time passed in Edo period, which is over 200 years ago. Japan had extraordinary knowledge of copper and created a lot of beautiful traditional metal works, including the sword fittings or koshirae of Japanese swords. They had used unique technologies and know how to bring out the best of the copper. Today I'm gonna unveil ancient Japanese technology. After watching this video, you will definitely find something that you'd like to know about Japanese traditional metalworks. Before we show you the antique Japanese koshirae, we'd like to introduce the mystery of Japanese culture. What kind of accessories did people in your country wear in the past? These were made in European countries during 17th to 19th century. They were beautifully decorated with gems. Jewelries are used as fashionable items and also a symbol of wealth, power, and status. Japan is one of the countries with the longest history since 660 before the century. And they also used stones to make a lot of accessories in the ancient times. However, mysteriously, during 7th to 18th century, the stone accessories and ornaments are almost vanished in their history. The reason is still not clear, but that was not because old-time Japanese were not interested in being fashionable or showing off their wealth, power, and status. At least in the life in Edo, Japan, which is 400 to 200 years ago, there were a lot of fashionable wearable items. But in the Edo period, there was a shashi kinshire which prohibited people from spending on luxuries. So people have to refrain from wearing something that is obviously stands out. So they found a way out that is to wear something which has calm, subtle beauty. There is an old report from an American called Commodore Perry, who played an important role in the opening of Japan in 1853. In this report he says, Copper is very abundant and they understand perfectly well the mode of treating the ore and preparing the metal for market or for manufacturers. Today is very little jewelry worn by either sex, but they have a substitute for jewels, such as we cannot make. This is called shakudo. The method was unknown among Westerners at that time. Even now, only a small number of people in Japan know about this. But these artworks are really beautiful. This is the one from the Edo period. The base color is black all the way from bottom of the saya to the head of the tsuka. I'd like to ask you a question. Which part do you think is made of copper? If you want to think more, you may click a pause button and take some time to think about that. Here is the answer. Probably most of you might imagine the copper with this color, the metallic yellow or red, or the dark one if it is old. But this is deep black in an amelic. This is the shakudo, which old-time Japanese originally established to make a beautiful artworks. Shakudo, which means red copper or crow copper. In his report, he also mentioned this. This is a mixture of gold and copper which they color with torch or ink, making it a fine blue or black by an art unknown among Europeans. He thought it was dyed by using ink. It seems like he didn't know how it was made. But what is the truth? I looked for an old literature in which the traditional methods are explained in detail. And finally I found this one. What do you think this is? This book is called Soken Kisho which is issued in 1751, that's the late Edo period. This is mainly for the directory of the craftsmen, but the detailed information of how to make the metal artworks is also covered. Before I found this, I thought these methods are secret during the era. Because the information is widespread, many people might easily imitate these. For example, for the method of creating Japanese swords, which is secret in the old time, it was known just among apprentices of the same school. So no historical records earlier than 1600s have been found and the technology is lost. In the same way, the method of creating shakudo is possibly a lost technology. The writer of the book Inaba Tsuryu was a researcher of the sword fittings and the expert of these appraisals. 
so the contents are pretty reliable and detailed. The style of the letter is so old and it's pretty hard for me to read because Japanese letters have been refined several decades ago. As you know, modern letters have 50 hiraganas, 50 katakanas, and many kanjis. But these characters change a little bit. But some letters are similar to modern letters. Let's decode. Here is the recipe of shakudo, which says Nigurome o tsukuru ho, akagane hyakumoku, katajirome nimonme. Migi, fuki awasereba, nigurome to naru nari. Shakudo nado ni awas tokoro no shitajigane, snawachi kore nari. It says how to make nigurome, which is the base material of shakudo. Nigurome is prepared by mixing 100 me of akagane and 2 monme of katajirome. Akagane is pure copper, while katajirome is a mixture of several elements such as antimony, lead, and arsenic. Antimony is one of the rare metals. It is commonly used to increase the strength of lead, such as a bullet of the gun. Lead is a very soft material used to make many things now. Arsenic is a non-metallic element. It is known as a strong poison if it is high in concentration. Katajirome is used to make the copper artworks dark and deep color. Me and monme are old Japanese units of so-called shakkanho, which are not common now. These units were used for measuring the weight of money because people in the old era evaluated the value of the money by its materials and weights. Monme is around 3.75 grams and me describes the same weight as monme. It sounds confusing and strange, but only when you count the weights, which are multiple of 10 monme, you will use me instead of monme. For example, 20 monme is 20 me, but 21 monme is still 21 monme. So here it says, mix copper with katajirome at the ratio of 100 to 2. Then next, shakudo wo tsukuru ho. How to make shakudo? It seems like there are several kinds of shakudo recipes. Nigurome gane jumonme, yakikin ichibu. Yakikin means pure gold, and for the unit, tenbu equals to one monme. So it means mix nigurome gane with pure gold at the ratio of 100 to 1. It says this is shakudo, but it's also called mesashi gane meaning low-class shakdo. The different percentage of gold changes the texture of shakdo. Middle class uses 3 to 4% gold. High class uses 6 to 7% gold. Only the percentage of the gold is different. I explained about the material of shakdo, but if you just make the alloy, it will not become dark black or blue color. The shakdo itself is just like a copper color like this. This is an antique menu key for Japanese swords, this part and the surface is discolored due to the friction with the hands when the sword is swung. So the shakudo needs treatment to turn into a beautiful color. After being polished and complete removal of oil and repeats from the surface, shakudo is being put into the warm iroganejiru. What is the iroganejiru? Here is the recipe of iroganejiru. Kuodo tenmoku of Rokusho. Rokusho is a milled kujaku ishi. Kujaku ishi means peak of rock. The color and the pattern is very similar to the feather pattern of a peacock. That is composed of various types of copper compounds, mainly including basic copper 2 carbonate. I didn't actually understand how to use tenmoku, because tenmoku is a bowl looks like this. It's roughly a cone shape. So the quarter tenmoku means this or this. I think the latter one is right. But in that case, I would use this type of cup with the line or just measure the weight. But I guess the volume of the material is just not very important. Next, 1% volume or weight of tanban against rock show. Tanban is a deep blue crystal composed of copper sulfate which exists in nature. Half tenmoku of vinegar. Use vinegar for cooking. And it says it should be kibuki 
It's not a particular vinegar brand. Kibuki means very good vinegar, which is especially sour one. So I think the vinegar should have a high percentage of acetic acid. Lastly, 5 tenmoku of water. It also says water should not be hard water. I think ionized metal disturbs the good coloring of shakudo. It is amazing that Edo people were that particular about the water. Japanese used water to make a lot of things in Edo period, such as tofu and wagashi, which are hard needed tasty water. I think they are so strict about the difference in water and know much about how the composition of water affects the coloring. That's really amazing. Rokusho and Tanban probably play an important role, but why can shakudo be colored with iroganejiru? Let's see the science behind the amazing technologies of ancient Japanese. Shakudo color looks dark blue or purple if the gold percentage is high. This makes the alloy more noble than just black. But gold color is gold. Why does it make the copper like that? We first have to think about the mechanism of why it looks so. Until now, there is no complete study about the mechanism and thus, the contents in this video is based on my own hypothesis. On the surface of the shakudo, there is a layer of copper oxide mixture, Cu2O and CuO. The layer of the copper oxide is said to be mostly Cu2O and a little CuO. And each color is red and black as shown here. To make it simpler, let's think about the pure copper with the copper oxide layer first. Let's say the thin layer of Cu2O and CuO is formed on the pure copper like this. When the white light is irradiated, only the light with reddish color is reflected by the surface of the pure copper. The white light is a mixture of all visible light. Different colors of light have different levels of energy. The level of energy is determined by the wavelengths of the light. For example, in the air, the light of the wavelengths 480 nanometer is blue and 760 nanometer is red. So the copper reflects the visible light with longer wavelengths like this. If the reflected light passes through the thin Cu2O layer, light other than red is absorbed so it looks more reddish. If there is Cu-O, which is black layer, it will become dark because every visible light is absorbed evenly. This is the mechanism of why the old copper looks this color. In the case of shakudo, the same thing happened, but the difference is the existence of the gold particles. Gold looks shiny orange or yellow because it highly reflects green to red color of light. But if the particle is small enough, the interesting phenomenon happens because of the so-called surface plasma resonance. Depending on the diameter of the particle, they absorb different colors of light on the surface of the particle. You can find the phenomenon around you. For example, I think most of you might know about stained glass in charge. The red stained glass includes tiny gold particles and the glass looks red. Shakudo is a mixture of gold and copper. Gold particles can distribute like this in the alloy. A report says that by using electron microscopy, you could see 5 to 10 nanometer of gold particles in the layer of Cu2O. But this size of small particles seems to absorb short wavelengths of light. So the light penetrating the 5 to 10 nanometer particles should look red. But Shakudo color looks dark blue or purple, but why? Color, which is absorbed by the surface plasma resonance, changes depends on many reasons other than particle size such as the shape of the particle and solvent. I think the reflective index of the solvent affects the color of the shakudo the most. The absorption peak wavelengths of surface plasma resonance increases linearly depending on the reflective index of the solvent. The reflective index of water is around 1.33, Cu2O is 2.17, CuO is 2.63. So if the gold particle is embedded in the copper oxide layer, it is highly possible that the peak wavelength shift to the longer wave and the color looks blue. To sum up, I think why shakudo looks dark blue or purple is caused by two principles. First, the absorption of light by the layer of copper oxide. Second, the presence of gold nanoparticles which induce the surface plasma resonance. The contents of iroganejiru are basic copper 2 carbonate copper sulfate, acetic acid. In the water, the solvent material will ionize, 
so copper sulfide is ionized. Copper 2 carbonate does not dissolve in the water, but if the solution is acidic, it becomes soluble. Since there is acetic acid in the recipe, the solution will become acidic. So the lock show can dissolve a little bit in the solution and release the copper 2 plus iron. So there are high concentration of copper iron in irogane jiru. There are two possible ways of how shakudo becomes dark color. On the surface of shakudo, copper 2 plus iron is equilibrium state like this. Cu2 plus plus Cu is 2 Cu plus. But the Cu plus is very unstable in the solution and can immediately react with water to form oxidized copper like this. Another possible way is that the dissolved oxygen reacts with the copper and forms Cu2O. So until the layer of oxidized copper becomes thick, the composition of the layer is mostly Cu2O. In most shakudo coloring, the thickness of the Cu2O is possibly around 1 micrometer. But Cu2O exists at the surface of the shakudo starts to react with oxygen and forms CuO. CuO absorbs visible light. High percentage of CuO will also absorb the beautiful blue or purple color of shakudo. So the shakudo gradually becomes dark. The reaction also happens in the air, which we have 21% of oxygen. So the surface should be covered by the wax or the oil after the treatment is done. To sum up, in irogane jiru, my hypothesis is basic copper 2 carbonate and copper sulfate is to increase the concentration of the copper ions. And acetic acid is to create the acidic condition to dissolve the rock show or basic copper 2 carbonate. Shakudo coloring is very interesting, but also very complicated. So there are many recipes depending on what color you'd like to make. For example, you may change the pH of the irogane jiru by putting a different percentage of the tampa. Adding some umezu, which is from Japanese umeboshi, can also affect the reaction. It is thought that the balance of CuO and Cu2O and the final crystal structure of them affect the color of shakudo. You might be able to obtain the color that you like by optimizing the recipe of your irogane jiru. My explanation about why shakudo looks dark blue or purple and how does irogane jiru work includes the hypothesis that I made by referring to the previous report related to methyl oxidization, which I have included the link in the description. If you have any ideas or the comments, we are very happy to discuss with you in the comment form. Thanks for watching. We are very happy if you have more fun with Japanese cultures. Please subscribe to our channel and see you next time.